This is a tutorial for timers and clocks version 1.3. In this video, we'll take a look at using the timer script. To get started, I'll create an empty game object in the scene and I'll drag and drop the timer script. I can add it to as many game objects as I want to have multiple timers in the scene. For this example, we'll just do one timer. You can also select add component and type in timer and select the timer script. There's also a timer prefab with the script already attached that you can just drag and drop into your scene. The first thing we'll take a look at is timer state. Timer state defines whether or not the timer is able to process time. By default, it's set to disabled. We'll set it to counting, that way it starts immediately when the scene starts. Timer type, we can do countdown, count up, or count up infinite. The first example will just be a countdown timer, and then we could set the start time. I'll set it to 10 seconds. I'll leave the timer speed at one. We also have time events. We can create a list of these to trigger at various times. And we have a times up event that will trigger when the time is up. Finally, we have UI text output. So we can output the timer string to a text component field. For this example, I'll right click and select UI text. I'll reset it. So it's in the center of the screen and I'll increase the scale a little bit and I'll just increase the width and set it to be center aligned. From here, I can assign the text to the timer text field, and we could see the output of the timer is actually being output to this text field. You can also select Text Mesh Pro UGUI, but I will leave it at the default text. Here we also have some display options and leading zero options. Since we're only using a 10 second timer, we can disable the days, hours, and minutes. And for the leading zero, if I don't want that displayed, I'll show you that when it's actually running though. I can just toggle off the leading zero for minutes. One thing I wanna do before I press play is set up some time events. So let me go ahead and do that. Here's where you can call your custom scripting functions. For example, if you wanted to do waves, this would be wave one, and maybe we want it to be triggered at eight seconds. We'll pretend that the directional light is actually something else. So I'll assign the directional light and I'll select the function. I'll just select game object set active and I'll leave it to false. So when wave one is triggered at eight seconds, the directional light will be disabled. I'll go ahead and increase the size of the time events to three. So the second one will be wave two. This will trigger at five seconds and it will turn the directional light back on. And the third one will be wave three. And this will trigger at three seconds. It'll turn the directional light off. And then at zero seconds when time's up, I'll turn the directional light on again. So the time's up event is a separate event. Let's go ahead and press play so we can visualize this. Here we can see the timers counting down and it's going through the various waves. And now it's finished. So to show you how this works with custom scripting functions, I have some utility scripts. One of them is destroy objects. So I'll just add a destroy object script to my timer. And on the times up event, I'll call an additional function. In this function, I'm gonna call the destroy objects script, which has a destroy function. So any objects I add to this array will be destroyed when this destroy function is called. For this example, I'll destroy the actual timer game object. Let's go ahead and press play. Here I'll also toggle off the leading zero for seconds. We could also toggle off the milliseconds field too. Now we could see the timer was destroyed, but we still have the canvas in the scene. As one final example, just to properly show you how you would likely want to clean that up and get rid of the text too. I'll add the canvas to the destroy objects field. The timer has finished processing all of the waves. 
and when it was done, it cleaned up itself and the canvas that was displaying it. To finalize this tutorial, let's take a look at some of the additional options. So we also have a count up timer. Let's set the start time to zero and the finish time to 10 seconds. Here, I'm just gonna get rid of the time events. We can still use them. The times up event, remove that option and I'll just make it destroy the timer when the time's up. So now the timer should just start at zero, count up to 10 seconds, and then it destroy itself. Okay. And the final option on the timer is count up infinite. So here we can set a start time if we like. I'll just go ahead and press play. This timer will just continue to count up. It does accept time events. It will never stop. Let me go ahead and adjust the display options. I'll enable all of the fields and then I'll select use system time. And now this is displaying my current system time. So this is the time on my PC. It's the 265th day of the year. It's the 23rd hour of the day, the 18th minute of the hour, and the 32nd second of the minute. And that's it for the tutorial. Thank you.